these are sagittal sagittal and t2 axial images of a uh, unfused uh, this is a, of, a new, of a child this seems to be a child i can see an abnormal signal intensity area which is centered within the fourth ventricle causing dilatation of the fourth ventricle it is appearing hypo intense on t1 and hyper intense on t2 it is causing compression effect over the cerebellum and the and pons cerebellum posteriorly and pons anteriorly uh i can see it is extending from uh from an abluska these are the gradient and adc so these are the gradient and adc images so okay, on gradient echo it is not showing any signal voids flow signal voids in it and it is not showing diffusion restriction because it is high on adc yeah, that was the purpose to show these images so pre and post on post contrast and has red it is showing uh, heterogeneous heterogeneous post con heterogeneously enhancing component is an so these are, are these all these are all these, these images what do you so with so the age of the patient and with these features i would keep ependymoma as my first differential okay what else and second differential would be medulloblastoma but then th that would not give such that would not be centered within the fourth ventricle and would not be extending up to the foramen of lushki foramen of meganti and lushki that as that was expand, extending okay what else and uh, th these were the other uh, third your, less like sorry so your favorite diagnosis is ependymoma that's correct ependymoma yeah here is the ct is that helpful yeah this is uh, again ct scan plane axial section i can see a hyper enhancing mass center within the fourth ventricle okay hyper not not hyper dense mass sorry hyper dense mass center within the fourth ventricle see what diagnosis so again i will stick to my diagnosis of ependymoma Uh, these are the two uh, ct scan brain axial images uh, likely of uh, age uh, year male uh, patient uh, showing there is a, a hyperdense uh, mass lien which is centered in uh, in midline in in at cerebellum with the uh, surrounding edema is noted uh, no any other uh, lien is noted uh, no internal uh, calcification uh, uh, is noted in this lien t2 and t1 uh, on t2 the lien is uh, 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 hyper uh, iso to hyper on t2 with and on uh, t1 the lien appears hypo intense diffusion uh on uh, diffusion rate image it show uh, restricted diffusion and uh, on adc it's low on yeah. post contrast on post contrast images it uh, show uh, no enhancement apart from a central uh, uh, a peripheral hyper intense uh, hyper, hyper, hyper intense uh, mural nodule Okay, so what is your diagnosis or differential diagnosis? Uh, sir, on the basis of uh, this finding, uh, 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 as it's uh, hyper intense uh, on nodule is which is uh, 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 on post contrast images. So my uh, first uh, diagnosis differential is uh, uh, as uh, pilocytic astrocytoma. Okay. and then uh, considering a child uh, so uh, as it's a favorable midline location of uh, medulloblastoma said uh, so i kept in the second okay in my differential and uh, third is uh, uh, ependymoma this is um, uh, axial t2 weighted image of a pediatric patient uh, taken at the level of uh, cerebellum showing an infratentorial intraaxial um, uh, uh, cystic uh, hyperintense lesion appreciated within the uh, region of uh, cerebellar 
uh, vermis uh, uh, that is uh, causing mass effect in the form of partial effacement of the fourth ventricle with slight uh, um, uh, perilegional edema. Uh, sir, I would like to uh, look for T1, P or post contrast images if available. Uh, so on T2 uh, images, uh, on the sagittal images, um, it is uh, uh, it has a peripheral, um, slightly uh, hyper intense component, irregular, uh, and it is uh, it it is on uh, it is showing facilitated diffusion on uh, DWI ADC images, uh, and on and on post contrast uh, pre and post on pre contrast it is hypo intense and on post contrast it is only showing peripheral uh, nodular um, component uh, or that is discontinuous uh, peripheral nodular component of enhancement. So, so considering uh, all the features, uh, my provisional diagnosis is of uh, pilocytic astrocytoma, okay. uh, most likely because it has a uh, cyst with a nodular nodule enhancing Any nodule. Feature? So that was your reasoning of the pilocytic astrocytoma? Yes, sir, um, a cystic okay. with a nodule. Okay. Provided with the MRI exist lysis T2 and T1 weighted images, so there is a, a, a abnormal intensity lesion is noted at the uh, region of uh, uh, right cerebral hemisphere, uh, which is uh, uh, hyper intense, mostly hyper intense on T2 and hypo intense on uh, T1 weighted images. The peripheral part is hypo, and there is a there is a diffusion uh, diffusion rated uh, intense uh, giving of diffusion uh, uh, restriction peripherally uh, uh, however the central part is uh, giving no dif uh, uh, diffusion uh, restriction <coughs> it is also oh, giving uh, uh, causing a com uh, compressive uh, compressing effect on uh, the mid brain and the uh, 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 left cerebellum uh, it is uh, on contrast enhanced MRI. It is uh, also giving the peripheral enhancement. However, the central cystic part is not enhancing. So it is a uh, heterogeneously enhancing cystic plus uh, uh, solid uh, uh, mass lesion uh, at the site of right cerebellum. Uh, Just to one thing. There can be the same diagnosis multiple times. I'm not going to trick you that uh, each case is separate. They can have the same diagnosis. So what's your diagnosis and differential diagnosis? So it does not look like a medulloblastoma or ependymoma or uh, pilocystic astrocytoma. However, okay. uh, sir, sorry, I missed the age of the patient. It's a young, I think, four-year-old. It is most. It is uh, the region is uh, most likely a look at the site of cerebellar parenchyma. It is not at the site of vermis. Okay. So what that tell you? Um. Sorry, sir. It is compressing the port ventricle. Okay. Uh, with the proximal hydrocephalus. What's your diagnosis? Then? Final diagnosis. So it is a solid with cystic uh, type of any um, peripheral lesion uh, with uh, no peritigenal peri edema, okay. um, at the prominent peritigenal edema. So it is uh, compressing the fourth ventricle. Uh, um, do you favor any diagnosis or do you want to give a differential diagnosis? Or? So hemangioblastoma. I will just tell you all the findings. So our the different our diagnosis was I think ependymoma in this case. So if you have a lesion in the posterior fossa, which is bright like a light bright, okay, just like a light bulb, this cannot be ependymoma. This cannot be medulloblastoma. Usually the tumor which has that brightness is pilocytic. Okay, I okay. can resolve. So if you have a, so these are the points which uh, you have after this, we we're going to do another four cases and I will see whether these points help you guys or not. So for everyone, 
if the lesion is light bright on T2, it is not middle lobe blastoma, it is not ependymoma, my number one diagnosis will be pilocytic astrocytoma, okay? So that is okay. just based on the T2. Then I go here, it has a facilitated diffusion and it is again on the ADC, it is very bright. Medulloblastoma has diffusion restriction, ependymoma has some. So if the lesion is that bright on ADC, this point also favors pilocytic astrocytoma. So we have two points. And it is normally people think the pilocytic has like a nodule and a cystic component. It can have a solid enhancement. It can have a nodule. And people think it is eccentric needle, but you, it can be in the midline like this case pa patient here. If you look at the CT, the lesion is very dark. Middle lobe blastoma, almost, there is almost, there's no 100% thing, but I say more than 95%, you, you cannot have hypodense middle lobe blastoma. You cannot have hypodense pendymoma. Okay. So okay. But what we learn from this case, if the lesion is light bulb bright on T2, if there is a facilitated diffusion, and if the lesion is dark or hypodense on CT, my number one diagnosis is pilocytic astrocytoma. Okay. So we're okay. going to apply all these points. In your board, you can say the posterior fossa tumor in the child, you can have pendymoma, you can have middle lobe blastoma, you can have ATRT, but, but then you can tell the examiner, based on these three features, out of all those tumor, I favor pilocytic astrocytoma. Is it clear? Okay. Yes, sir. So this Wait. lesion is hyperdense on CT. It's a non-contrast. When the lesion is that hyperdense, I'm not going to mention pilocytic. Okay. Okay. For, again, for your exam setting, you can say all those three tumor and then you de define the findings. If the lesion is hyperdense, my pilocytic is almost, almost out. Okay. So I'm left with metalloblastoma, ependymoma, ATRT, lymphoma, those things. So as I was telling you, most of the lesion, pathological lesions are, they are dark on CT because they have water. The, all the pathological lesions, they have more water. They are dark on CT. They are bright on T2. So that doesn't help me. If something had, happens in the opposite way, if the lesion is hyperdense, that is helpful to me. If the lesion is hypointense on T2, that is helpful to me. Okay. So based on those features for hyperdense lesion, I, it could be metalloblastoma. It is in the midline. It could be lymphoma. It could be pendymoma. Could be it, other things. So that's the number one point. But the hyperdensity cannot only be due to hypercellularity. Sometimes you have a hemorrhage. Sometimes you have a calcification. So if I see something which is hyperdense on CT and it is dark on T2, as we shall see, I want to look at diffusion. If the diffusion is restricted, that confirms that I'm looking at a hypercellular tumor. I'm not looking at a proteinaceous tumor, which is hyperdense. I'm not looking at a calcified tumor, which is hyperdense. I'm not looking at a hemorrhagic tumor, which is hyperdense got everybody. So look at the CT hyperdensity. So this hyperdensity exclude one lesion only that is pilocytic. Look at the T2. Normally the lesion, we just saw the pilocytic. This lesion is iso to the brain parenchyma. It's very dark. So this tell me the same thing what the CT told me. It could be a hypercellular lesion, all of those. But I have to confirm from the diffusion. I went to the diffusion, the lesion is bright, homogeneously bright, it is dark on ADC. So there is diffusion restriction. So that tell me it is a hypercellular tumor and now my pilocytic astrocytoma is totally out. So now I'm left with middle lobe blastoma, pendymoma, ATRT, not by the location, but just by those T2 and by the signal appearance. And there's only a little bit enhancement. Middle lobe blastoma can enhance, it cannot enhance, it can partially enhanced. So this one, so that lesion was middle low blastoma. If the lesion is dark on CT and it is light bright on MR, no facilitated diffusion, that is pilocytic. Okay. Yeah. If the lesion is hyperdense on CT, it is dark on T2, it has a diffusion restriction, very homogeneous appearance. So that is most likely middle low blastoma. These tumor, they can have cystic component, they can be totally solid. Pilo, even the pilocytic astrocytoma, ependymoma. So I have a cystic and a nodular lesion. I don't care where the location is. Yes, sir. I, I only am interested in the solid part, what happens to the solid part, okay? 
So this solid part is brighter than the cerebellum. Okay. See, if I go here, this part is yes. brighter than the cerebellum. And if I go, I'm yes. only look, I'm only looking at the solid part, not the cystic part. There is no diffusion yes. restriction. Yeah, actually, yes, if I go here, it is light bright on ADC. Yes, sir. So these two feature, it was bright on T2. There was no diffusion restriction. It is light bright on ADC that favors pilocytic. Okay, sir. And the medulloblastoma can have seen appearance like a nodule and a cyst, but these two feature I'm looking at. Diagnostic feature is I'm repetitive here because they say the repetition is the learning, key to the learning. Yes, Hyperdensity on CT, hypointensity on MR, T2, diffusion restriction, hypercellular tumor like middle lobe blastoma. Dark on CT, light bright on T2, no diffusion restriction, I am favoring pilocytic. It has a cystic lesion, it has a solid lesion, but if I only use that criteria, I can call it pilocytic and it has enhancement, okay? So what we are going to do, we are going to look at the solid component. Is this solid component is brighter or ISO than the cerebellum? So this is ISO or dark. What about diffusion? So this one has marked diffusion restriction. So these two feature, it was ISO on T2, it has diffusion restriction, although it is just like a pilocytic solid and a solid component and a cystic component, but these two feature rule out pilocytic this. Okay. So these two feature again, first I showed you a solid middle lobe blastoma. This one is a cystic and a nodular. So that is also middle lobe blastoma. And it is enhancing, again, I don't care. Pilocytic enhance, ependomoma will enhance, middle lobe blastoma will enhance. More I'm interested in the CT density, T2 hyper or hypo intensity or diffusion restriction. See here on the CT, what the, how this region is hyperdense or hypodense. So again, so we are only interested in hyperdense. That's correct. So I'm not interested in the cystic part. I'm only interested in the solid part. So whatever we saw on the MRI, this density is confirming that feature. It is a hypercellular tumor and it could be metalloblastoma. Okay. There are some other lesions, ATRT, as I said, there will be some other, I will come to those in a minute. So let's look at those just as a comparison. Okay. This is pilocytic, this is middle, both are midline. Some people say the location matters, the pilocytic could be on this side or the eccentric in the hemisphere. It is solid and cystic, this is solid. This is hyperdense, this is hypodense. Based on this, I'm going to favor as pilocytic. This one I'm going to favor as middle of blastoma. Look at T2, light bright, I'm going to favor pilocytic. ISO to gray matter, I'm going to favor hypercellular tumor, one of them is middle lobe blastoma. This is bright on ADC, just like a, like a fluid. And this is so dark on ADC. So again, facilitated diffusion, bright on ADC, I'm going to favor pilocytic. Okay. So I see a midline. Uh, this is uh, axial sections, uh, plain CT uh, brain. Okay. And uh, there is a, a well-defined, uh, rounded, predominantly hyperdense lesion, okay. which is uh, seen anterior to the fourth ventricle. Okay. And uh, it has internal hyperdensities as well. So uh, just let's skip the detail. I will just ask you the question. I have so many cases. So okay. this lesion is hyperdense. What you are favoring? Medulloblastoma. Which one? Medulloblastoma. That's correct. So are you going to say pilocytic? Mm. No, because the no. solid component it is hyperdense. It is hyperdense over pilocytic also. That's correct. You, so you, hopefully we other people are also learning. This is T1. I don't care. This is a or T2. It is ISO or it is light bright. Uh, it is um, ISO. ISO. What is that favor? It favors medulloblastoma because yeah. light bright goes in favor of astro. So this is ISO, so we are going to call it medulloblastoma. What about diffusion? There is restricted diffusion. So that confirm your findings? Yes, it does. That's good. So again, it enhances, it has a solid, like, like a pilocytic kind of a nodule. I don't care about enhancement. Only thing we care, hyperdensity on CT, brightness or darkness on T2 and diffusion restriction. So your diagnosis is? Medulloblastoma. 
So, but for your just so these are classic. I think I think this is a board case. But when you for your board purpose, please only don't stay on the medulloblastoma. You describe the most common tumor in the posterior fossa are medulloblastoma, pilocytic astrocytoma, ependymoma, ATRT. But the but based on these particular features, I am favoring medulloblastoma. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mention all of them and then yeah. give you a reasoning and then give the diagnosis. So you did great and let's see who is next. So that was medulloblastoma. Thank you. CT scan brain axial slices uh, showing uh, there is okay, go ahead. Uh, showing uh, um, well defined cystic lesion seen involving the cere uh, left cerebellar hemisphere and also ex um, seen into the oh, yeah. extending I'm to the vermis. To, I'm going to cut off. So you are going to you seeing everything yes, right. My only question is we are just practicing our rule. Is this solid lesion is hyper dense or hypo dense? Hyperdense. So what that means? What that favors? It is hyper uh, hypercellular lesion. So um, what are you going to Medulloblastoma. What we said before. Are medulloblastoma hyper on CT or they are hypo on CT? So medulloblastoma are hyper on CT. And this one is hypo. So why you are saying medulloblastoma then? So this uh, solid component in it is uh, relatively hyper. Uh, it is solid hyper dense. It is cerebellum, so it is hypo. So what the hypo favors? Uh, hypo favors pilocytic astrocytoma. Pilocytic. Okay. Uh, it is um, it is lower than the okay, just cerebellum. Here is the T two. Is it too bright or it is iso? It is uh, bright, but not. Uh, um, what about here? Uh, light bulb. This is light bulb, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So what so, you favor? Uh, it is favoring pilocytic astrocytoma. So what do you want to see next? Uh, next, uh, diffusion restriction. Diffusion. Okay. So here is diffusion. This is the ADC. How it looking on ADC? Yes, sir. It is hyper, not uh, not showing restriction. So that. Uh, it, that means it's pilocytic astrocytoma. That's good. So it confirmed our suspicion. And again, this thing is enhancing solid yes. nodule and cystic. Again, I don't care about those. Okay. Thank you, sir. So that's good. So we have, uh, again, I just put these medulloblastoma, pilocytic on enhancement. They almost look like the same. But those are the features which are helpful. Um, here, I can appreciate the uh, 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 hyperdense lien. In so the, on the CT, it is hyperdense. So what are you favoring? Medulloblastoma. So no pilocytic. So no pilocytic medullo. Okay. Yes. It is enhancing. We are not. We don't care about enhancement. Yes. On T2, how it is look? How it looks? I saw the grave. I saw. So that favors which lesion? Medulloblastoma. Medulloblastoma. And what about diffusion? Um, it's showing diffusion restriction. So that confirm your diagnosis. Yes, sir. Medulloblastoma. Okay. So whatever you said, it is 100% correct and you will pass, but this is not medulloblastoma. It has all the feature of medulloblastoma. Just to tell you, we are not pathologists. So we have to give a differential. It is my fault. I set up that trap, but you, are, you pass huh? in flying colors. Though medulloblastoma is the commonest lesion. This is rare in the posterior fossa. So what are the other cellular lesion, you know, hypercellular lesion beside medulloblastoma? It can be lymphoma because it's That's good. It, could, it could be lymphoma excellent. It is very homogenous. Lymphomas are homogenous and has diffusion restriction. What else? Uh, it can be uh, ependymoma. Ependymoma do, don't have that much diffusion restriction. It yes, has some, but not to this extent. And I, I will show you, and the ependymoma is not that homogenous. Okay. So this case was diffusely enhancing. It is a child, and this was Burkitt lymphoma. Okay. So I just started your differential. Now you can broaden it up, okay? Yes. You are not going to mention lymphoma as your first diagnosis in a kid, okay? More than 90% hyperdense lesion will be metalloblastoma. CT brain axial images at the level of the posterior fossa. Okay. There is the mixed dense lesion is noted in the posterior fossa. Okay. However, the predominantly the solid component appear iso to hyperintensive brain karma. Okay. No calcification is noted. Next. 
on the next level further measure these are so appear happiness happiness with respects of calcification and the completion of the fourth ventricle according to your points uh, okay on on these basis my topmost difference is medulloblastoma on the base of calcification and the density of the lesion thal okay. component that's good so our pilo is out it could be medulloblastoma but there are other hyperdense tumor which i have not introduced i'm going to gradually yes, introduce those so okay so what about here on what the here two? is it iso or brighter or it light bright so it was some brighter than the brain parenchyma so it's brighter okay so it is not bright like pilocytic and it is not iso like medulloblastoma so this yes, feature sir. is a little bit different so yes, maybe sir. we are looking something else okay if it was okay. light bright i would have called it pilocytic if it was iso i would have favor medulloblastoma mm -hmm. but this one is in between okay it means sir for then next time we should proceed with a different structure image okay and this is a t1 mediated image there i so intense to brain brain gamma and the t2 so there's same somewhat hyper intense is on comparison with cerebellum okay adc on the different restriction it's showing the different restriction no different restriction only solid pairs with some more component showing different restriction some are not but most are no diffusion restriction some may no be some but they're not yes. that dark as we saw so the diffusion restriction is different both from medulloblastoma and both from pilocytic pilocytic was light bright and medulloblastoma was diffusely hypointense hypo kind of in between so its t2 was in between is the adc is in between only thing the hyperdensity was similar to the medulloblastoma so i sorry i gave you the diagnosis here so <laughs> but there's a one feature here look here so if you see the lesion like a going into the spinal cord, canal cord like canal. so this is called toothpaste appearance okay so it, it is just like a toothpaste it squeezes through the foramen okay. of majendi it squeezes through the foramen of lushka so this is ependymoma so what do we learn ependymoma has a t2 in between both of them it has a mm. adc in between both of them okay mm. so this was ependymoma so let's take the next case you stay here online thank you, thank you. i stay so again for you here Can I continue my this case? You can continue. Okay, sir. CT brain axial images at the level of posterior fossa. There is the uh, hyperdense mass lesion noted in the posterior fossa with same aspect for calcification. Also, there is extension is noted for a menalish car and majendi okay. on these images. What do you think? And the on these, I put the two differential diagnoses: sir, one topmost medulloblastoma, another also the ependyma. And on what this about, what about pilocytic sir no sir because uh, the that, that that i wanted to listen so that's good so here is t2 so sir t2 is the iso intense to brain pain comma some more hyper intense to medullo so medullo should be iso and the what was in between let's that's look at in, let's look at some more images pre and post pre on the post contrast images there is heterogeneous curvilinear enhancement is noted on the side different restriction no different restriction as much so here is the adc is it light bright like pilocytic or it is in between or it is dark like medulloblastoma or it is in between it's in between so what was the lesion which was in between ependymoma and how we confirm that we we'll look uh, at the how is it confirmed sir we can look uh, with the whether it's going through the foramen of majendi uh, sagittal image sagittal image what do you see now so same to face like extension into foramen of lushka and majendi this how, how it is going down and it is going this way so that is our pending okay I, so that's good you did great so i'm just going to summarize again so, so if there it is hyper dense on ct it could be a pendymoma now we are going to diff expand our differential it could be medulloblastoma but not pilocytic okay based on ct i cannot tell it has calcification which favor ependymoma but you it was not that much calcification okay. then the t2 if it is iso then medulloblastoma if it is in between that is ependymoma okay if it is very dark on adc then it is medulloblastoma if it is in between that is ependymoma those feature and then if it has a toothpaste appearance okay 
Here is a picture from StatDX. So it is toothpaste going here and then through, through the foramen aluska and going through here. So just remember that toothpaste. It's like very soft humor. It is, it is squeezing through every possible place available. Mm. So here, if I go side by side, this is your metalloblastoma. This is a pandemoma. They look like the same. They both may have some calcification. They're both midline. So I cannot tell, but I can at least rule out pilocytic. Okay. Then we go to the next image. Metalloblastoma is ISO. And a pandemoma is slightly brighter. Then I go to the ADC image. Very dark on ADC. Not that, just a minimal dark. Some are maybe brighter. So that is your pandemoma. And if I put all side by side, okay. So on the CT, hypodense, I know I'm repetitive, but I, because in the initial, so I got the wrong diagnosis. I just, you have to print in your mind these three points, okay. On the CT, hypodense, pilocytic. Hyperdense, ependemoma or metalloblastoma. Same thing here. I go to the T2, it is light bright, pilocytic. I go here, slightly brighter on T2, ependemoma. ISO on T2, it is metalloblastoma. I'm looking at the ADC, very bright on ADC, pilocytic. ISO to mildly bright here, that is ependemoma. And very dark on ADC, that is your metalloblastoma. Okay, I hope everyone got that. Uh, these are the axial slices of uh, CT brain uh, T2 weighted images. Uh, it shows uh, um, so, uh, so in order to go fast, it shows some cortical hyperintensity. You don't have all these. Uh, yes. Yeah, so these are, I think, mock board. It sometimes they are easy, sometimes they are hard. Yes. You don't have all the information. Let's see. Here is our flare. What do you think now? Uh, uh, sir, these are showing uh, multiple uh, uh, cortical white matter hyperintense signals in, uh, predominantly involving the frontal lobes okay. and uh, 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 partly involving the uh, temporal lobes as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, these shows uh, uh, restricted diffusions uh, uh, in the similar uh, subcortical uh, white matter. Oh, it's, and, it's mainly cortical, okay? So yes, cortical. So what your differential or, or diagnosis? Sir, uh, my top differential will be, uh, uh, it can be multiple sclerosis. Okay. Or uh, uh, lymphoma. Or, um, or it can be said, uh, uh, glio uh, metosis cerebral, which shows. Uh, have, you, have you seen multiple sclerosis, diffusely bright cortex, and diffuse diffusion restriction? Multiple sclerosis, which I remember, those are small lesions, they are small, very small small the, they are called carpus yes, callosum. So. Mm, yes, sir. Uh, okay. Sir, it can be Adam. Uh, uh, if it ADEM is, uh, that also has multiple, multiple white source. matter lesion. This is basically cortical process. Let me ask you a different way, a different question. What are the causes of diffusion restriction in the cortex? Sir, uh, it can be infarction. What kind of uh, infarction? Sir, uh, 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 Watershed infarct. Watershed, infarct. Uh, sir, watershed so, infarct was, and can be venous infarcts, but they are bilaterally symmetrical. So, so uh, okay, I'm going to help you because we have so many cases and we have to do, and there are some teaching point every case has. Okay, so this patient has bilateral cortical hyperintensity. And this patient has diffusion restriction, which is involving insula. It is involving cingulate gyrus. Mm -hmm. But there's some other point. It is sparing the occipital lobe. Mm -hmm. It is sparing the perirolytic area. Those are very typical feature of something. And then I go here. I can see the temporal lobe is involved. Mm -hmm. Cingulate mm -hmm. gyrus is involved. And then there is a T1 hyperintensity. Okay. Yes. What do you think now? 
is the limbic system is involved here what else mm. sir venous uh, infarction can take me so okay so we we'll go through some of these cases hopefully after this uh, you will have some clarity on this Yes, sir. If there is a cortical hyperintensity and diffusion restriction, there are multiple causes, I will tell you. But if you have these features, involvement of the insula, involvement of the cingulate gyrus, and sparing posteriorly, I only favor one condition, and that is hepatic encephalopathy. Okay, These are the particular features of hepatic encephalopathy. And mm -hmm. you can also see this thing in, uh, like, uh, if you have a hyperuricemic disorder, the congenital, they can also appear like this. But what are the teaching point? Sparing of the posterior occipital area, sparing even of the periolundic area. So those tell me there are 20, more than 20 causes of cortical diffusion restriction. Those two points tell me I'm looking at hypo, I'm looking at hepatic encephalopathy. And how can I be more sure? There is a T1 hyperintensity in the globus pallidus. There are many conditions which give you this, and liver failure is one of them. So this reinforces my diagnosis. Okay. So what were the teaching point in this case? Sparing of the occipital lobe, sparing posteriorly, involvement of the T1 hyperintensity. That is your hepatic encephalopathy. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. So if I go through here, so these are the just differential diagnosis, and that was. Good diagnostic clues while already went through these. These this is the list of cortical hyperintensity, and it's not the complete list. You can have postictal, you can have migraine, endotrachmy, hypoxia, CJD, hypoglycemia, encephalitis, all these conditions. Uh, there appears to be hyperintensity is noted in the cortical region, predominantly in the posterior. Uh, okay. part uh, so and some of them are also in the parietal so uh, on diffusion restriction uh, they were they are showing diffusion restriction okay mm, so firstly i was considering it to be a press but uh, since they are showing diffusion restriction so i this uh, these uh, hyper intensities could be some uh, Temporal and occipital region as region cortical based. Sir, uh, along with it, I think there are some watershed in uh, in the previous images. Okay, so, so you this, are for the differential one is watershed. What else? Sir, uh, this could be some uh, sequelae of uh, sir. Uh, it could be due to some hypertensi uh, hypertensi. This uh, could this be lamellar cortical necrosis due to hypertension? Which cortical is lamellar necrosis usually have T1 hyperintensity and usually no diffusion restriction. What okay. else? And uh, sir, my other was a press, but press they also the don't they also don't show diffusion restriction. Yeah, they and can have some, but not to this extent. What else? So that's all I was thinking at the okay. moment. So, repetition. so I gave you the list before. And yes. uh, in the last case, this is actually opposite to the last case. In the last case, we saw another point is if you have something bilateral symmetrical, think about meta metabolic. Okay. Our yes. last case was bilateral symmetrical and that was hyperammonemia or hepatic encephalopathy. So that was uh, the, in this case, we have posterior involvement. Okay. Yes, sir. And there is relative sparing anterior. So those are, I will favor one condition that will be hypoglycine. Okay. okay. So what we learn, if it is posterior sparing, it is hepatic encephalopathy or urea cycle disorder, hyperammonemia. If it is posterior involvement and it is the sparing anteriorly, I, I'm going to look at the lab. And the, usually in these patients, this is the adult patient. Normally this thing happen in pediatric patient. But the patient who are diabetic and they are on insulin, when they change their dose or they try something, this patient actually tried a new drug. And when the, high, the blood glucose level falls less than 50, then you can have this kind of changes. But the teaching point is posterior sparing, hepatic encephalopathy. Interior sparing, hypoglycemia. Okay? Hypoglycemia. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.
another thing please take cases if you take cases you will remember those i will tell you just one right now you are not in a board exam if you miss something i'm not harassing you i'm just telling you the good answers okay i will tell you i was in ke and in third year it's like 30 years ago i'm just telling you why you have to be at the hot seat our biochemistry professor was bilkis jamal zafar she is famous with the name bj zafar bj zafar most of you will not remember because it is 30 years ago i went for the viva and she usually have all the demonstrator sitting next to it so she asked she tell me i am going she asked me in punjabi and i am going to repeat that in punjabi main tere kol ek sawal puchna hai agar tu jawab deta to pass hai agar nahi deta to fail and you can see what happened to my mind all my neuron got tortured all everything got fire up i don't remember anything from pharmacy and only that question and that answer she asked me what is the side effect of reserpine i say it is anti dopaminergic and it causes depression i would have never remember that if i was not in that hot seat so please come in on the hot seat what you are going to miss today you are going to remember that forever hopefully okay so i want more volunteers thank you sir sure hypoglycemia and there's a specific name for it adult hypoglycemic encephalopathy and the serum as i said the glucose level should be 50 okay. so i am presented with acute sections of mri brain uh, flare images are provided in these images i can see hyper intensities almost bilateral symmetrical hyper intensities are noted in bilateral cerebellar hemispheres uh and also in the vermeer uh, vermeer uh, i don't see any um, hyper intensity in the visualized temporal uh, lobes or in the uh, pons so considering the bilateral symmetrical hyper intensities in cerebellum my differentials would be um uh, this could be um uh, uh sir so they could be the acute infarcts okay Uh, I mean, uh, which are T2 flare, like the, in the territories of uh, pica. Okay. Okay. And other differentials uh, would be cerebellitis. Okay. Although they are not always bilateral symmetrical. Okay. Um, and in metabolic disorders, um, uh, I don't see any evidence of atrophy. Okay. Um. What so else can we? What else can involve cerebellum? Um, so sorry, but um, uh, so I don't exactly remember. Uh, so hemorrhages can happen venous infarcts, but they are also not bilateral symmetrical. Yeah, and same thing with the pica infarct. Usually the pica infarct are not uh, bilateral symmetrical. Sometimes yes. they can be, but most of the time they are not. Hmm. Okay, so let's help you with more images. Okay. Uh, in these images, I can see the cortical based hyper intensities are also noted in the bilateral, occipital, and the temporal uh, and the parietal lobes. Okay. Uh, so temporal lobes and the occipital lobes. Okay. So uh, and I can see there is. Uh, sir, uh, I want to see the previous image. Uh, sir, I can see the uh, face of uh, panda sign in the midbrain. Uh, just ignore that for right now. Okay. Okay. Now, sir, I want to see the superior section. Yes, in this image, I can see the hyper intensities are seen in the parietal lobes as well as in the uh, periventricular white matter in the um, no diffusion restriction. Okay, so what's your differential now? Is the same, or are you going to change it? Sir, again, metabolic disorders. Sir, can it be Milas? Uh, Milas, uh, not symmetrical. They have a in fact in a non-vascular distribution, but they are not symmetrical. Mm-hmm. And, so they, and the mean uh, loss has a lot of diffusion restriction, and this person does not have diffusion restriction. Okay, so in alcoholics, there is usually cerebellar atrophy, and uh, there is. But this is um, a this is a edema. Yes, this is edema. Okay, let um, me give you a hint. Is it a posterior process or a anterior process or it's a diffuse process? So it's basically a posterior process. What are the posterior processes? Posterior process without diffusion restriction. 
forget the cerebellum cerebellum is normal press? The, press? so this is this is press okay i just wanted okay. to i just wanted to highlight the point everybody is familiar with this pattern posterior involvement and there was a question before how we differentiate press from hypoglycemia so see here cortex or the subcortical white matter is involved and there is uh, there was no diffusion restriction i just wanted to highlight the point cerebellum can also be involved symmetrically in the press okay and in atypical press anything can be involved you can have basal ganglia thalamus just the frontal lobe but i hope in your board exam they are going to show you typical cases this is actually one of the typical appearance of press you can have bilateral symmetrical cerebellum involvement okay